Jayhawks, and they're trying to get their third road win to keep up with Bill Self's club in conference play. Last Monday, West Virginia lost a heartbreaker at home to Kansas. So they want to try and find a way to bounce back with a road win tonight. How important would this win be for Bob Huggins' group if they could get it? Well, it's critical because in this league this year, we've seen that there is no one soft spot in the schedule. And tonight they're playing a team that has desperation on their mind because of the slow start. control the opening tap. TCU has lost four of their last five, but they've all been close losses. Emrich Williams doesn't quite get the soft roll. And here comes Javon Carp. TCU will play man-to-man. -man. West Virginia, lots of movement. They're starting to play through their big guys. Zach Canate, that's a little too strong. Keep in mind, Alex Robinson is the only point guard for TCU. Last two games, he's played 78 minutes. Air ball from Brodzianski, saved by Williams, but then turned over. We'll see a steady diet tonight from West Virginia of motion offense. A lot of passing, cutting, random movement. But they are trying to play through their post players more. Foul on Williams as he held Lamont West on the cut. Henrich Williams is a double-double machine. So that's the last guy that Jamie Dixon wants to see in any kind of foul trouble. left alone. There's the game's first bucket. Not Wesley Harris' screen, but they gave him the shot, and that allows West Virginia now to jump into this press Virginia defense that I saw take on a new light on Saturday against Texas. Much more energy and more gambling. And Rich Williams down the lane, denied by Canate. Javon Carter lost it, found it again. I think Carter's got to throw that ball inside. He pulls up instead, knocks it down. And these baskets, Bob, critical for the defense because it allows West Virginia to set up full court, and Harris can be a harasser on the inbounder. I think you'll see more random trapping just like that tonight. They've got to cause a little more mayhem. And gives it up. Rodzianski able to finish plus the foul. Good pass from J.D. Miller. Well, J.D. Miller hesitated to shoot that ball because on that previous play, watch Sagaba Kanate. He's made an art form out of the two-handed block. And his theory is, if you're going to come dunk on me, I need both hands to protect that rim. And you saw last Monday night what a job he did against Kansas in that first half. And he picked up right where he left off last week against Kansas. He was the single biggest reason why West Virginia had that double-digit lead, the energy he provided defense to offense. Baxter Miles with a hand in his face. That's a brick. And I think when you play West Virginia, you've got to attack the shot blocker. I don't care how many he gets. Air ball taken. from Williams. Saved by Brodzianski right to Javon Carter. Carter attacks. And an offensive foul is called. 
Alex Robinson has got to be very sure every time he steps in because, as I mentioned, Jalen Fisher is out for the season. Their co-point guard, terrific position, and Javon Carter runs him over. Machi Bender on for the first time as he will spell Kanate. Isa Ahmad in as well as Beetle Bolden. Kenrich Williams. And Brodzianski looking for the back tap instead of foul is called. That's going to go against Lamont West of West Virginia. And Rich Williams oh! throws it down in Bender's face. Well, there's no Kanate, but you've got to keep attacking the rim. This is one of the best scoring teams in the country in the painted area. Second to Duke. So you dance with who brung you. Isa Ahmad can't answer. Blocking foul called on Bolden. Uh, take a look at this. Watch this off the inbound. This is Kenrich Williams, fifth-year senior out of Waco, Texas. Throwing it down. And you know, Bob, he's a small forward. You and I have watched him now progress the last couple years. He's not on the Julius Irving watch list of 20 best small forwards in the country. Not good. Held ball, and the arrow will give it to West Virginia. It makes a difference when Kanate is not there to guard the rim as well. Machi Bender did his best Kanate impersonation and instead got put on a poster. Now anybody who's ever coached against a shot blocker, you know you have to go at them regardless whether they block it or not. And now West Virginia turns it over. It is impressive facilities to say the least here at TCU and before he was a three-time Major League Baseball All-Star, Matt Carpenter called TCU home, took Holly on a tour. We'll check it out next. TCU facilities and I hope this sheds some light on what a special place this is. Go Frog. Well, Matt actually lives right across the street from campus. He drives a golf cart over here every day to work out. He and his other Major League Baseball buddies who played here at TCU have given back so much to the university. They live here, they train here, they call it home, and he's actually a men's practice player for the women's team as well, contributing in every little way. Well, when you go pro, regardless of your sport, the facilities are basically a lateral move from what you have here at TCU oh, yeah. to whatever your pro team is. As Robinson has it knocked out of bounds, seven to shoot for the front. And how about that great baseball team Jim Schwarzenegger has here? What, uh, five College World Series since 2010, four in a row? Keep rolling guys like that through your program, you're going to win. And there's a three going down for Kawat Noah. It's a good young player. He redshirted last year. Young man from Australia. The Frogs have a terrific pipeline down under. Five to shoot. Issa Ahmad comes up short. West Virginia scored the game's first five. TCU has answered with eight in a row. But they turn it over here. Carter. Yes. Now, friend, we could just about take the title Sonic Blockbuster and apply it to any night this year in the Big 12. And another one tomorrow night. Be fun to watch, 7 p.m. As Kansas gets a look at Trey Young. Absolutely, and uh, Kansas already has three road wins in this conference. And tomorrow night's matchup reminds me of two years ago when 
They traveled to Norman to take on Buddy Heald and that terrific Oklahoma team. And at that time, there was a young guard on that Kansas team by the name of Devontae Graham. He not only did a great defensive job on Buddy Hill, but at that time had a career high 28. So Bill Self is going to have something up his sleeve to try to slow down the magnificence of Trey Young this season. How do you do it? Well, there's a lot of different ways. We saw West Virginia just face guard him and make it tough for him to get the basketball. I think the way, the way Kansas is playing right now, they have four perimeter players that can all guard Trey Young and switch on to him. And I think the other thing is you might see a little jump defense in the arsenal for Kansas. That'll be fun to watch. Nice bank shot by Canate. He not only has that left shoulder move, but he's really used to handling contact and going through it. Perfect example right there. Desmond Bain walled off his man and committed an offensive foul. And there's been a Teddy Allen sighting as well, Bob. A terrific young freshman who had such a great start to the Big 12. Bob Huggins felt that he was getting off course a little bit. Missed a couple games, and he's back in the lineup. It's a much deeper West Virginia team than it was about two weeks ago. Issa Ahmad doesn't get the bounce, and his return from that first semester academic suspension really beefs up the bench. Noy, he's got back-to-back -back threes. Big, big-time shooter, and at six foot eight, he just shoots over any defense. Carter for three. In and out. Guess what? He just keeps feeding him and he keeps knocking him down. Another three for Co-op North. This is the fifth straight game. That young man's made three threes in a ball game. How hot is he? Benate with the spin move. Sweet. Benate's doing that with one foul, so he's got to be careful. He doesn't want to sit the rest of the half. Benate, no. another block as he throws back the drive of Sean Oldham. And Allen is fouled on his way to the opposite basket. Well, how about this young man? He played his high school ball at Montverde Academy with Ben Simmons. They redshirted him last year. And uh, they were high on him all last season. But watch this, Bob. When you take it at a shot blocker, you've got to go body to body. Sean Olden was avoiding the contact. With Kanate in one foul, you've got to go right through his chest. I don't care if he blocks 10 shots in the first half. Canate from deep. He's got another. Amazing improvement. Holden gets caught in the corner. And Rich Williams wants to get it across the timeline. Bain finds Williams. Blocked by Canate again. Javon Carter gives it up. Allen able to finish, plus the foul. I think Big Kanate got away with goaltending down there. That put the ball looked like it was on the rim. Jamie Dixon not happy with what he just saw, but we'll take a look at Coach Dixon in our Infinity Coach's Corner. Returning to his alma mater, what a job he did in 13 years at Pitt. 11 NCAA appearances. Take an infinity timeout in your day and vote for your favorite coach and charity. Analogy, Trey Young is filet mignon, okay? I love filet mignon. I can eat it every night of the week. But I want some sides with my filet mignon. You know, Bob? I want cream spinach. 
I want some, uh, you know, mashed potatoes. You're talking my language. I want a wedge salad. And, and what's happening right now is we've got this great piece of meat, but we don't have any side dishes. And what's got to happen is Oklahoma's got to go back. And the way they were playing early, Trey was moving the ball, and his teammates were shooting the ball. Now they're, they're throwing it back to him and almost like saying, you take over. And I think it comes from Trey. Trey's going to have to become more of a facilitator and tell his teammates, shoot the ball when I throw it to you. Canate's not shy. That one's off the mark. Teddy Allen keeps it alive. Jump hook. Rolls off. The tip follow is there, though. Well done by Wesley Harris. And Wesley Harris is an energy guy. When he scores, he jumps right into that press. You know how good Nate Adrian and Jonathan Holton were? Harris just learning that spot. Rich Williams rebounded by Carter. Blocked by Brodzianski on the Allen drive. Teddy Allen's going to see on the replay that he had Kanate posted, but he's got such an offensive minded game. See where Kanate is? He's buried Brodzianski. And instead, he puts it on the floor, and he allows the length of Brodzianski to come into play. Devon Carter sits down for the first time. Dax Miles and Beetle Bolden now to run the backcourt for West Virginia. Bolden for three. And that will be a foul against J.D. Miller of TCU. He cannot take new and two because he's trying to get to the glass. And there's a familiar face on the road trip with the Mountaineers, Nathan Adrian, who had a tremendous career for Bob Huggins. Bob actually calls him by his name now, Nate. For four years, it was something else. As opposed to? We can't say it on the air. But they have become good friends now that he's done playing for Bob. Canate. Miles the rebound. Yeah, this kid's the best offensive rebounding guard in the Big 12. What a nose for the ball he has. Canate through Brodzianski, and he pays the price and commits the foul. And that might be number two. So now Pinate with his second foul has to go back to the bench as Machi Bender checks back in. That's an example of a veteran player not biting on the fake. Take a look now. Watch Brodzianski stay vertical. And he's going to stay down. And then a little acting job at the end right there. But there was contact. Sold it. Now they want to make sure that this was not a flagrant foul of some kind. So... James Breeding and John Higgins are at the monitor to take a look at the elbow of Kanate up near the chin yeah. of Brodzianski. That should not take long. I don't think, uh, I think they got the common foul. To me, that's inadvertent. And he's just turning right there. If anything, because of the cylinder rule, that comes into play because he should be allowed to turn and pivot. Just for posterity of the power conferences a year ago, the Big 12 had the shortest replay review, slightly over a minute. My theory with replays, and this is in every sport, they mm -hmm. should all be one minute long. We should put a clock on television. Yeah. And the minute that anything begins to be reviewed, the clock should start. And if an official, a replay booth, football, hockey, basketball, whatever, if you don't see what you need to see in 60 seconds, it's not obvious enough to change the call yeah. that I like was made on the floor or on the field. Colin? 
Okay, guys, I just overheard the officials explain that to the coaches, and they said that is a cylinder play. Because he was yes. in the cylinder, they're yep. going to take the foul off. They're explaining with Coach Huggins right now. Jamie Dixon obviously not happy with the call, but uh, Fran, you were all over it in the cylinder. Yes, and that's that's a that's a good replay review right there. Jamie Dixon is going to act incredulous. But the, the player, there's a cylinder that goes up through an offensive player's ability to turn, Bob, and pivot. So if you invade his ability to turn and pivot, you're invading the offensive player's cylinder. And so they waved off the foul because they went to the monitor to determine that Brodzianski had invaded Kanate space. Good piece of officiating. <laughs> Great news is that Kanate doesn't pick up a second, but I like Bob Huggins keeping him on the bench for another minute or two so he doesn't pick up a quick one. So the possession with 23 on the shot clock stays with West Virginia. Bender, a little too strong. Loose ball. Bender is able to shove it back to Boulder. A terrific hustle, and Dax Miles is in there milling around at six foot two. Allen is rejected. He is met by J.D. Miller. Uh, J.D.'s a local kid. He gets better and better. Take a look right here. Teddy Buckets loves to play around the basket, but. J.D. Miller came over and erased it. Beetle Bolden was scoreless in the two losses by West Virginia last week. Fades away here. In and out. That was just about all the way down for Bolden. And Brodzianski ended up with the rebound. Robinson down the lane. Fouled on the floor. It's the final foul to give for West Virginia. Guys, one of the things developing in this first half of the game is that TCU is doing a masterful job listening to their coach, Jamie Dixon, and his scouting report. And every time out, he draws this black lines all around the right block, protecting the basket against West Virginia. You see a wall of purple guys go over and protect that block, or J.D. Miller literally protected it with a nice block. They're doing a nice job of listening to what Jamie's focusing on that huddle and then executing it on the floor. That's a great point, Holly. Remember, in these five losses, they've given up 90 points a game, not Jamie Dixon-like, when you think of his great history at both TCU and Pittsburgh. Lloyd cuts to the basket. A perfect feed for Brodzianski. Jump off. Oh, I like that. And what they did, and they're putting Miles in that triangle. Bob, we said it at the early part of the game. West Virginia, with Ahmad back and Kanate's confidence growing, they want to be more of a bully ball team like they've been in the past. He checked for Noy, and it goes out of bounds off Kanate, so it will stay with TCU when we come back. Tied at 20 here in Fort Worth on Big Monday. The great emperor penguin migration, trekking 100 miles inland to their breeding grounds. Except for these two. It's not a textbook possession, but uh, Tom Ezzo will take it. Miles Bridges, he's got 13. The rest of Sparty is snoozing, though. It's a one-point game right now. Meantime, K-State in Waco taking it to Baylor. And Bob Texas rebounded from a 30-point, 35-point thumping against West Virginia tonight. Well, Kevin, this has been, for 13 consecutive years, at the end of the year, basically the way that the Big 12 standings have looked. Kansas up top, everyone else chasing. 13 consecutive Big 12 titles. Is this the year that finally one of those challengers catches them, and is it West Virginia? Want me to answer that? Sure. No. Done. <laughs> Good now, prediction. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go out on a win right now. Tomorrow's going to be big for Kansas. 
If they can get a four, a fourth road win already, that would be huge, and they've won it some tough places. As the shot clock was winding down, Ahmed Hamdi came up just a little bit short. And you can see, Bob, if I'm Bob Huggins, I'm going right back into that triangle and getting a Kanate poster. Instead, left alone, Lamont West hits a three. And a good look from a guy who struggled much of the year out there. And I think it's been a shot selection. But wide open, he can really shoot it. Two for his last 12 from three before knocking that one down. And now a foul near midcourt on Daxter Miles. That'll be a one and one. When you know when you think of West Virginia, and you think of Bolden and Kanate and Bender and the like. We forget how young this team is. This this is a team with seven sophomores and a freshman playing right now. Season, Kenrich Williams had 19 double doubles, number 11 in America, number one in the Big 12, and became the only player in the history of TCU basketball to have a season with 400 points, 300 rebounds, 100 assists, or more. And throw in a triple double as well. Well, Fran, you talked about Kenrich Williams being the best small forward maybe in the country, but I can tell you he's doing a great job handling the basketball tonight. Because of the injury to Jalen Fisher, he's being asked to handle it more. He says, I was a pretty good point guard when I was back in high school, so he's very comfortable handling the ball so far against the Mountaineers tonight. Yeah, and I think Jamie Dixon is too, Holly. They, they like to use him in a lot of ways with that ball in his hands. Miles skips one to Bolden. In and out for three again. Desmond Bain has his pocket picked by Carter, and that lets Kanate hang from the rim. I want to tell you, we've seen this. Javon Carter has such quick hands without fouling. It is unbelievable how many balls he gets on. And that's why he's such a great defender, one of the best, if not the best in the country. Robinson throws it away. Just watch, Bob. Watch how quick Javon Carter's hands are. He's going to work in from behind, and he gets a piece of it. He is just, that's a, he's an expert at that. He's a young man that was the NABC National Defensive Player of the Year. And, of course, in this league, the Defensive Player of the Year a year ago is a junior. up with Bolden. Five to shoot. Bolden to Carter for three. Long rebound. Daxter Miles. That's what he does. Sets up Bolden. He'll try a triple. That's good. Timeout called by Jamie Dixon. West Virginia opens up a six-point lead with a little over five to go in the first half. We're back in 30 seconds. Jimmy's gotten used to his whole room smelling like coming out of Oakland and this guy had one major college offer and it was West Virginia. He wasn't even among the top 15 players in the state of Illinois as a senior and he played at one of the most uh, prolific high schools, Proviso East. It's turned out guys like Doc Rivers, Jacob Cohen, Shannon Brown. And Rich Williams, that's a little too strong. He wanted to bring back some good memories for Jason Kidd. Yep, as well as it's a tough day for him, let go by the Bucks. Now this, this Javon Carter boy, he was playing in a summer league uh, AAU tournament in Florida. It was the final event of the summer, and his AAU coach, a guy named Dickie Simpkins, who played with the Chicago Bulls, sent to Bob Huggins and his staff, just come take a look at this kid. I think he's your kind of guy. Javon visited about a month later, and the recruiting was over. And what a steal.
West for three. Yes! I'll tell you, when he's making threes, watch out because this West Virginia team, if there's been any bugaboo, it's been their offensive prowess last couple games. Leaning in with the shoulder was Alex Robinson. And now Lamont West contributes as part of Press Virginia, takes the charge. You remember the one guy today Bob Huggins was on in practice about his defense? Lamont West. He makes the three, Bob. And isn't it amazing how many times a guy gets going offensively and it jump starts his defense? Got a big lineup in here right now. Expect to go inside. Moving screen called on Lamont West. Under four minutes to go. Big Monday here in Fort Worth. Seven point lead for the Mountaineers. ESPN's exclusive You Can Take It for College Basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Proud sponsor of Big 12 Basketball. West Virginia's press is only as good as their ability to make shots. If they can make shots and get in a rhythm defensively, it's not just a full court pressure, but now they have pressure on the ball, so their half court defense is that much more active. The cumulative effect? Cumulative effect. We love the cumulative effect. Very nice, Bob. What do you think, Franny? Cumulative effect, Seth. Absolutely. The longer the game goes on, especially with 11 bodies now, Bob, everybody back. They not only wear you down physically, but they wear you down mentally. And remember, TCU is without Jalen Fisher, so Alex Robinson has got a really shoulder load. You know when you play with two point guards, one guy can take a mental health break for a few minutes. a Rob doesn't have that choice. He's got to play basically the whole game now. Especially against this opponent. And that's tough. He needs a mental health break. Picking the pocket of Beetle Bolden, though, is Robinson. Bain handles the tough pass. The floater gets stuck. Arrow belongs with TCU, so it will stay with the Frogs. Holly? Well, guys, in that last Jamie Dixon huddle, he really got on his team and said, we're trying to be heroes out there. What we need to be is just us. Just us. Guys are trying to do too much one-on-one. -on -one. So the very next possession, they came down, reversed the ball, had some nice ball movement, and got an assist on the play. Eight assists now in this game. Think about it, friend. They average 20 a game. Too much one-on-one. -on -one. They got to get back to their system. Yep, and Holly, we've been here 24 hours, and we can tell the pressure that TCU feeling because they need this win. Well, they average over 87 a game, and right now they're on pace for about 65 or so, I guess to be expected against West Virginia, arguably the best defensive team in the Big 12. As Baines off the mark, offensive rebound. Brodzianski, and it's blocked again by Kanate. That's great timing. He has great timing. He always leaves his feet second. Miles for three. That's too strong. Robinson for three. Isa Ahmad lost it. Kenrich Williams gives it up. And it's flipped up and in by North. Both coaches are looking at the officials wanting a call. Isa Ahmad, offensive foul. Brodzianski took the charge. Well, don't think that TCU is not aware of where Kanate is, but watch this one, a little dump off, and Noyes squeezes it through there, and then watch Kanate help some other That's good sportsmanship. Well, you think about this, these two teams, it's like, the thing that struck me is this international kids on both rosters. These guys come from all over the world. It was unbelievable the way college basketball has changed in the last 10 years. Robinson stripped and taken away by Javon Carter. Carter goes to coast, blocked by Bronzianski. He doesn't have the strength of Kanate, but watch the timing. Watch him wait. 
Good shot blockers. Wait until you leave your feet first. Oh, that's really an elbow. Canate shoveled one underneath. Kenrich Williams rejects Teddy Allen. Rodzianski. In and out. Kenrich Williams tipped it to Bain. Robinson floats one up. That's good. Plus the foul. And we're tied. All of a sudden, TCU doing a great job on the offensive glass. And take a look right there. A little ball fake by a rob It'll show the ball, then he goes high off the glass. And I think it was Carter that reached in. So Carter picks up his second personal foul, tied. Just over a minute to go in the first half. Eddie Allen rolls it off the rim. And they got numbers. Bain throws it down. <laughs> Carter for three. Rodzianski knocks it away from Kanata. Loose ball on the deck. Ripped away by Kenrich Williams. It's another three on two. Robinson lobs it. Broken up by Carter, but followed by Bain. Timeout comes. And how about the response by TCU? Taken out of their normal comfort zone. They're a scoring open floor team. And we're down by as many as seven. And now here they are with a four-point lead with the shot clock turned off. Well, and I think West Virginia needs to go inside. Uh, they, they had success in this half, taking the ball inside. Bolden for three instead. Fight for the loose ball. And it looks like a foul will be called on J.D. Miller when over the back of Teddy Allen, who had the rebound. The second on J.D. Miller, and it'll be a one-and-one one for Allen. That's team foul number seven. Teddy Allen's a 74% foul shooter, but if you're TCU right now, you got to be aware of the activity of Kanate and Harris on this free throw. First point for West Virginia in over four minutes. Still 3.7 seconds to go. Robinson gets a screen. Good if it goes. He knocks it down. They'll go to the monitor to check. Allen is hurt. He was screened hard at midcourt. They have to make a signal, and the signal was that it was good. I thought he didn't get it off in time. And you might be right. It looked yep. like it was still on his hand when the clock went to zero. It was Beetle Bolden that was banged up at midcourt. He's up. Let's check in after we take one more look. Well, it was a As great... to whether or not that ball was still on the hand of Robinson before the clock read zero. Let's go to Holly. Well, Coach Dixon, your team was struggling on offense, but the last five minutes they've started putting something together. 
What is it? Well, it's the rebounding, really. I think we got the ball out and got some transition going. Uh, I thought our offense was good against the press. We got to just continue attacking, and we did that for the most part. A couple bad decisions, a little rough shot, but we got going here with uh, some stops to get us back. All right. You came back here to build something special. What has this atmosphere been like so far, Coach, for you? Uh, we've been sold out. They, they're really into it. Our students have been terrific, and uh, we're just trying to change what uh, culture that uh, uh, they didn't think we could win here, but we're winning, and we're going to win tonight. Thanks, Coach. A confident Jamie Dixon, although he just lost three points because the officials did see that the ball was still on the hands of Alex Robinson in transition. That lit the crowd up as Desmond Bain threw one down. And Holly, some injury concerns for Bob Huggins who start off the second half. Well, that screen right at the, when the ball was going off at the half court line, excuse me, at halftime, Beetle Bolden took a hard hit and they would screen in This is a blow. He is their three-point threat. Really a good defensive player for West Virginia. So they just told some of the guys at the end of the bench, you better get ready to play. We're going to need you tonight. Yeah, and remember, Bob, on Saturday, he had 19 off the bench against Texas. So he is, as Ollie said, a major offensive weapon. And I expect West Virginia to go, go back inside to Kanate. He shoots over Brodzianski. A little too strong, but the rebound put back comes up short for West. And it looked like West Virginia in that possession turned the heat up on Alex Robinson. Robinson short for three. West Virginia scored the first five. TCU then answered with the next eight and ended the half on an 11-2 run. Again, this is a TCU team that averages 87 and a half points a game. They're the sixth highest scoring team in the country, but running into Press Virginia will certainly limit that. Robinson glides in, and the reverse is good. And a good job by Kenrich Williams sealing the defender who couldn't get to A-Rob on that drive. That's 14 possessions for West Virginia there. They've got two free throws, that's it. the three down rebounded by Desmond Bain. I'm very surprised West Virginia's not playing through Kanate. Too many jump shots forced. Robinson bounces one to the corner. Williams. The follow by Bronzianski not there. And Daxter Miles saves it but throws it right into the hands of Miller. The follow by Kenrich Williams off the J.D. Miller miss. Right now, TCU is winning the energy battle. West Virginia got off to a great start, but TCU has turned it up on both ends. Foul on TCU before the Lamont West cut. Yeah, and this summarizes the first 22 minutes of this game, Bob. Watch the effort by TCU on the backboards. Look at all the gold jerseys standing around. Very unlike West Virginia. I was going to say, of all the years you've watched a Bob Huggins West Virginia team, how often have you said the opponent is winning the energy battle? Yes, but that's how you have to play West Virginia. You, you're, you're, you're fighting with a bully, and you have to get the first punch in. Carter drives it short. Allen flips it back to Carter in the corner. He'll try a three. That won't go. Offensive rebound, Kanate, and he draws the foul. Saturday on ESPN, the fifth annual Big 12 SEC Challenge. Got great games all day. Freshman feed on Trey Young and number 12 Oklahoma take on Alabama 215 Eastern. Then at 430, AM against number five Kansas at Allen Fieldhouse at seven. Kentucky will be in Morgantown to take on number seven West Virginia. All three games. The ESPN app if you're out and about. Freshman phenom Trey Young. What about the freshman phenom Colin Sexton from Alabama? Now he's been out the last couple of games, but that is going to be a uh, 
monster matchup, which is why all 30 NBA teams will be in Tuscaloosa Saturday afternoon. Those two kids, a lottery pick, both of them. I know you see the numbers right there. And can't knock it down. Looks like a foul will be called on Teddy Allen. But Trey Young right now on a big board for the NBA comes in at number six. There's Colin Sexton at number eight. Those two go head-to-head -head in a game you'll be at. Let's remind people about six weeks ago, that board did not have Trey Young in the first round. My, how things change quickly. Zianski goes around Kanate, and Kanate commits the foul on the drive. That's his second. And that's a smart play by the senior from Slovakia. He knows Kanate is not comfortable guarding out there and doesn't want a foul, but he just put it on the deck. to say it was first started in 1383 it's about 900 feet above sea level and he's over almost 6,000 miles away from home what i'm proud about though glass put on about 15 pounds he is doing a great job at that time. An offensive rebound set up desmond bay the second three went down and it's an eight point lead another jumper won't go for west virginia as wesley harris misses you might as well put that on the recording, another jumper that won't go. And now Teddy Allen throws it away. We still have to go all the way back to when there was 4-12 to go in the first half, the last time West Virginia made a shot. Yeah, and, and to me, you know, this guy's going into the Hall of Fame. I know he likes to play from inside out, and I'm just surprised they're not going inside more. Home run for Payne lays it in with the left hand. This is what TCU needed, Bob. They have five losses in league by a total of 16 points. It's been heartbreak city for a team that was undefeated in rank coming into league play. Issa Ahmad blocks. Kenrich Williams takes it away. Timeout Mountaineers will be featured 7 Eastern a big 12 sonic blockbuster for you tomorrow night on ESPN number 12 Oklahoma taking on Devontae Graham and number 5 Kansas the Jayhawks have won the last four against the Sooners, so we'll see if they have an answer for Trey Young tomorrow night. We'll step aside for just a moment and come back to Fort Worth and see if West Virginia has a push in the, in the last 15. And Matt Carpenter, Holly's buddy from the St. Louis Cardinals. Jake Adrietta, is he in the building? Haven't seen Jake. Well, Bob Huggins wants to know if there's a basket in the building for his team. <laughs> a field goal. Because they are coming up on nine minutes without scoring a bucket all the way back to the first half. And if TCU out of that timeout, first tonight, first time tonight to go zone. Baxter Miles. That won't go. The drought continues for West Virginia, but a wild pass by Robinson. He missed Sean Olden, so it's a turnover. Well, in that last Bob Huggins timeout, he used some pretty salty language. Let his team know if you don't pass the blinking ball to Kanate, and he was pointing at Kanate like, get this big, gigantic, 260-pound man the ball inside. It seems pretty simple, but when you look at it from court level, there's a lot of purple in there making it hard to get the ball inside to the big man. 
They're going to try right now, Holly. Instead, Kanate comes up top with 10 to shoot. It's Miles in the post. Brodzianski is called for goaltending, and finally, that is a field goal for West Virginia. And one of the things Bob Huggins loves to do in that little triangle inside is there's three players in there, is put his guard, Miles, in there because he's such a good post-up player and passer. So it's a three-man offense inside. You also mentioned earlier, Fran, how it seemed like West Virginia in their last game took press Virginia up to a different level. You don't make any baskets, can't set it up. Exactly right. I thought they pressed early really well. Why? They were scoring. Shot clock under 10. Brodzianski for three. And again, I'd be surprised if they don't go inside. Ahmad. No. Another rebound for Kenrich Williams. Brodzianski straight away. Those two straight threes that were both long by Brodzianski. Benate with the jump hook, short. How much better defensively has Brodzianski gotten three years because he's put that weight on, Bob? He can hold his ground inside defensively. Brodzianski again for three. That's a brick. The long rebound run down at midcourt by Robinson. That ball didn't hit the rim. So the shot clock is down to five, although the officials want to head over and see if it maybe did hit the rim. As James Breeding, when he saw the shot clock had not reset, blew his whistle. Yeah, I don't think it did. We'll see the replay. It looked like it went on the other side. He's been off three times. Let's watch it. Did Nate graze it? Nope. That's that coach's instinct, Bob. You know, you developed that. Ooh. I think you're right. I think that went over the top yep. of the rim. This should take pretty quickly, but uh, how about Brodzianski? He shot three straight threes with confidence, and none of them came close. It still does speak somewhat to the defense that West Virginia can play. The fact that they are shooting 30% from the field against a team that averages close to 88 points a game, and they are only down by 11 with 13 minutes to go. With their press, if they could ever knock a couple of shots down and get set defensively, they can, like an avalanche, get back in a game as fast as any team in America. They can, but to your point, they've got to score, and right now the jumpers aren't going. They're not getting to the foul line, and even that last shot by Kanate was really uh, outside the paint. they got to get somebody with two feet in the paint. I used to have a rule with my team. If we miss two jumpers in a row, the third possession better go inside. And John Higgins looks over at Jamie Dixon in the TCU huddle to let him know it did not hit the rim. So the shot clock is correct. It'll be a side out for TCU, and the shot clock will stay at five. Bob Huggins has inserted Logan Rout into the game. The sophomore from Cameron, West Virginia, who earned a scholarship this year. He was big on Saturday. TCU's going to get called for too many men on the ice here unless Brodzianski sits down. Now he sits down. They had six out there. Let's now see. they're down to five. Let's see what Jamie Dixon dials up here. Five on the clock, plenty of time. Robinson near midcourt. Lost it. A foul called on Javon Carter as the shot clock goes to zero. That's his third. That's one of those situations where you, as a smart guard, you have a clock in your head. You don't really even have to look up. And Robinson got to the paint. And that time it looked like there was contact. Take a look. He knows he's got to get this ball up. 
Carter reached. It looked like he, they said he reached in. He, wow. Yep. To me, it looked like Alex Robinson jumped right into the chin of John Carter. Well, the rule is Carter has to have two feet on the ground facing Robinson, and in the eyes of the official, they don't think he did. Watch Robinson turn the corner here. See, I'm not sure he ever really got in front of him, Bob. Two feet facing the man with the ball. But how about A-Rob? I don't think he's come out of this game tonight. And without Jalen Fisher now done for the year, this guy's going to have to play Iron Man minutes. He missed a couple of games earlier this year with some ankle and foot injuries, but the last five games in a row, Robinson has played at least 31 minutes. And you saw Jalen Fisher out for the rest of the season with a torn meniscus. That surgery on January 18th. Well, it's going to be routine that Alex Robinson's going to have to play 35 minutes or more. And a little zone here now by the Horn Frog. Second possession of the night. There's a bucket. Wesley Harris in traffic. Now let's see if that basket can ignite this press right here. See a lot of cutting right now by TCU trying to spread that pressure out. Robinson back to the corner. That three rings out for Sean Olden. Numbers. Miles glides in. Off the mark. Logan Rout couldn't keep it alive. And then a foul on Wesley Harris. Another missed opportunity for West Virginia. And they are down by 10. Under 12 to go on Big Monday. Shoes and Fran for show Holly Rowe. Big Monday for the first time here at TCU. Yep, and one of the things the Frogs have done, win the points in the paint game. They've got 24 tonight. I mentioned earlier, they're second in the country behind Duke at scoring in the painted area. And a foul will be called on TCU as we take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Mo Bamba putting on a show for Texas, and he is part of this group in the Big 12, the midseason top 25. Got to figure Trey Young is going to <laughs> yeah. be the runaway favorite to win that award, but Javon Carter not doing himself any favors with his effort tonight. Well, he, he struggled offensively in many of the last few games, Bob. But, you know, West Virginia people will probably disagree with this. He expends so much energy on both ends of the floor. He's always in the gym every time we go to Morgantown. You, know, you sometimes wonder, we saw this with Buddy Heald, can you, can you practice too much? You know, it's still a long year ahead. I love him. Well, I actually talked to Javon Carter about that today at practice. Like, he puts in about two extra hours every day in the gym. And I said, hey, are you doing too much? Are you getting tired? He said, no, I feel great. He's got 4% body fat. He added 15 pounds of muscle. And he is not, he says he's not tired. Look at those improvements that he's made, that extra work paying off for him in improvements. But tonight's been a tough game for him. He hasn't scored since the 14 minute mark in the first half. He's got to come alive as their leading scorer. You can see he can shoot the ball. He's improved in every single category. They've got to get him going right now. The average is close to 17 a game. He only has four on two of eight shooting and has not made a three in four attempts. Olden sets up north. The long rebound. Out of bounds. And it's off Kanate. Oh, that's a great play by Noy. That's one of those situations that the shooter knows where the ball is going to be missed. And as soon as he shot it, he took off for the miss. Take a look. Watch him start to run in right now. And he just gets a piece of it and throws it off the defender. Really smart play. That usually means that's one of those shooters that follows the ball with his eyes as opposed to putting the eyes on the rim. Rod 
Bertianski. Pass the foul. That's excellent footwork right there. You talk about, watch the drop step right here. Watch Bronzianski. He's going to try to go baseline. Watch him spin back and pivot away from Kanate. Really well done. Only five so far in the game make it six for Bronzianski. He was averaging nearly 20 a game over the last five for TCU. That foul on Issa Ahmad, by the way, his third. West Virginia is now out of fouls to give. TCU has one foul left to give. Kanata has it stripped away. Olden spots up. Got it. Oh, that's so big. That young man has been in a schneid. Only 6 of 22. He's going to provide some energy. Sean Olden, the Juco transfer. Here comes Olden again. And a foul near midcourt, and now we've got Noy, who wants to go back at one of the West Virginia players. They ought to take a look at this. And they will. Yeah, because Noy doesn't usually react like that. So you want to go back and see if there was anything at the beginning of the play. You can see Bob Huggins looking at Lamont West and read his lips. What'd you do? Let's see if we can see it now. Did now, let's back it up, guys. Did, did, it, did West grab Noy at the beginning of this play? He grabs him right there yep. on the wrist, and then Noy turns around and pretty violently reacts. So they'll review this. Will that grab of the wrist by Lamont West be enough in any way to justify the reaction of yes. Gwat Noy? No. And will both players they'll, maybe get a technical foul? They probably both will get a, a foul called here. They'll go back and review. Grabbing the wrist is just like grabbing the jersey. That's a that's a intentional foul. Noy reacts, and they've got to penalize that as well. And if that's the case, it should be point of interruption, which means TCU still had the ball. Watch, watch him grab the wrist. This is why Noy reacted like he did. So now he turns around, and they whistle Noy for the foul. And you have to call that. That's a foul. It, it's, it, it's interesting, Bob, because watching Noy the last two years, and you talk to him, very soft-spoken guy. So it had to be something to make him react. And that's what John Higgins seemed to immediately say to Jamie Dixon. But I saw what Noy did. That was what drew the whistle. That's what stopped the game. But he immediately went over to the... TCU bench to Jamie Dixon as if to say all right a player doesn't just react like that out of nowhere We're gonna go take a look and see what caused Noy to react pretty clear The wrist grab was what did it now. How do they penalize both players? Well guys, they are gonna call a flagrant foul on number 12. That is Noy. He's gonna get the back end of that they were saying that an a earlier elbow is what caused that interaction. I couldn't really see it on the replay, but Noy is going to get dinged. Okay, he's going to get dinged with a flagrant two and an ejection. Yes. Now, John Higgins just told me they cannot go back and re-referee the first foul. Okay, so you can't go back on this video and say, here's a foul here. So it's bad luck for Noy because he overreacted. He gets the ejection. And I believe because it's a flagrant two, this should be West Virginia. That's right. It's going to be free throws. And the ball. Yep. So if West can knock down these free throws, West Virginia converts. All of a sudden, 
what looked like a game that was going to be potentially a blowout and get completely away from West Virginia. They end up with a four or five point trip here. It totally changes how the rest of this game could be played. It does, but my coaching hat, I've seen this happen so many times. The basketball gods, don't be surprised if TCU now comes out and play with, plays with more vigor for their teammate. Now, this is a foul, but they missed it, so you can't go back and re-adjudicate that. You have to call the flagrant foul. They, they consider the flagrant two. And the reason it's a flagrant two and not a flagrant one, it was a combative act by Noy. Get the roll, Kenrich Williams, another rebound. That's his 13th to go along with eight points. If I'm TCU on this possession, I would have told my team, let's go inside, first chance we get. Any kind of contact and rim, they'll call a foul. A three from the corner for Sean Alden. That is so big. Because Fisher's out for the rest of the season, Sean Alden's gonna get a chance. And he was in witness protection for about the first half of the season. It's a young man that played at the same junior college as Kenrich Williams. New Mexico Junior College in Hobbs, New Mexico. Began his career at Pepperdine as Mr. Carpenter likes what he sees. He was a WCC All-Freshman yes. selection at Pepperdine before going the junior college route. And now he is going to get major minutes with Jalen Fisher laid up for the rest of the year. And and Matt here, Carpenter loves it. Here's my baseball analogy with Sean Olden. He's a guy that didn't get a lot of at-bats. So when you look at 6 for 21 from 3 during the year, you go, wait a minute, this guy can't shoot. No, he can shoot it. He just hasn't been getting an opportunity. But he will now. Plays 2 for 3 from 3 tonight. TCU looking for their first ever win against a ranked opponent in this building. All time, they are 17 and 150 against ranked opponents. But this is a different program that Jamie Dixon has going right now. And this does not look like the West Virginia Mountaineers we are used to seeing. You know, I, I don't know if it's going to maintain itself, Bob. When the young man got ejected, this often, this often ha affects the team of the player who was ejected. And, and, you're, and that's why I thought TCU would come out these first couple possessions with some renewed energy. Robinson just spins one off the rim. And the TCU bench thinks that that might have been goaltender. Let me, let me give you a history lesson. West Virginia trailed Missouri by 18 with eight minutes to go in Orlando. Came back and won because of Carter and Miles. Three seconds called. On Kanate. Was this basket interference on the drive by Alex Robinson? Let's take a look. Does he go up through the rim? That's uh that's basket interference. Remember, West Virginia's already got two road wins in this league. Steal by Wesley Harris. Back smiles, gives it up to Carter. Rolls it in. Finally, Carter with another field goal. He's got six. And let's see if they can set up a little pressure now. You can see how Kenrich Williams takes the heat off Alex Robinson at six foot seven, playing a de facto point guard spot. Robinson scoops it and scores! Jamie Dixon wants a timeout. Young, he has been spectacular. 
Having said that, though, even with those numbers, there's a way you think Lon Kruger can coach through him and around him and well, maybe improve that team. He, he's got to. In fact, I don't think Lon can do any more. I think Trey Young's got to tell his teammates, let's go back to playing the way we did early in the year. When I was dropping 15 assists a game, I think his teammates have gotten uh, gun-shy. They were at their best early in the year when he was scoring 30 or 40 and dropping 15 assists. And guys like uh, McGusty and James and those guys need to play like they did early in the year. There is a lid on the basket for West Virginia. Canate. A foul on the floor called on TCU, but they just cannot find a way to put one through. Well, how about Alex Robinson tonight? Watch this. Stuck. Nowhere to go, but a good jump stop, and then that little, what we call PhD, proper hand development. Watch the spin off the glass. Just gets it up there and kisses it in. And Bob, what a job this kid's done, because remember, he's got no backup without Jalen Fisher. I loved playing two-point guards when I was coaching. There's like two co-pilots flying a plane across the country. One guy goes to the bathroom, the other guy's still flying the plane. Sorry about that. <laughs> you talk about proper hand development. I call it proper facial hair development. He has been wearing a pretty heavy beard for years here at TCU. Before the Iowa State game, he went to the barber and got it cut off. That night, a career high and a school record, 17 assists. He's like, you know, I'm going to keep it off for the season because I'm playing well without it. But nobody recognizes him on campus without that distinctive beard. I have a feeling after the way he's playing tonight, they're going to recognize him now. Well, they recognize that pass to J.D. Middle. Remember, this young man had 17 assists in that game Holly talked about. More importantly, when Fisher was out last year, it was Alex Robinson who guided that team to an NIT title, playing all five games. And this is what he does best, Bob. Take a look at this little dime drop. Gets into the lane, behind the defense, and J.D. Miller ordered room service, got it delivered. At the other end, Kanate commits his third foul. Both teams now over the limit, so a one and one for Brontianski. TCU Bob is trying to get their third win of the conference race. They've got tough games to go, but I believe this. This league can put teams in the NCAA tournament and still be 8-10 and 10 and possibly 7-11. and 11. That's how deep the league has been, and it's an even home-and-home -home schedule, so there's, your, your competition is outstanding, even in losses. Carter, no. If these numbers hold, this would be a season low shooting the basketball for West Virginia. Oh! Hustle play. Bronziansky's got it. Off the deflection by Sean Olden. TCU looking like West Virginia themselves. Uh, Jamie Dixon orchestrating right by us. He said, spread it out. Run some clock. Little zone here by West Virginia. They go 1-3-1. One, one. Timeout called by Brodzianski as he was caught in the corner with TCU on top by 20. Well, Fran, you mentioned this TCU team, they have lost four of their last five in the league. Now, for the most part, it's have all been close losses. They lost by four to KU. They lost in double overtime to Texas, overtime against Oklahoma, uh, by five to Kansas State. But sooner or later, you have to win, right? I mean, yes. it, there are only so many close losses you can have. That's why this win tonight, or so it seems, has to be so important for TCU. It really is, Bob. Remember, they finished last season in the conference on a downer before they went to the Big 12 tournament, beat care of Kansas, and then won the NIT. But this is a team that has been so good early in the year and beat some good teams, a Nevada team that's very good. But you're right, in this conference, every night is hand-to-hand -hand combat, and you gotta come out on top in some of these games. But we felt that desperation today at practice and how ready they might be. 
TCU, by the way, still has trips to Kansas and to West Virginia, as well as a road game coming up two games from now at Oklahoma State. So three really tough road games left. Finally, a three for Wesley Harris. And here comes the press. He's got another three. J.B. Dixon just added another weapon tonight. Sean Olden. Teddy Allen leans in and draws the foul. Wednesday night, NBA doubleheader. This week takes us to the Lone Star State right here for our first matchup at 8 Eastern, 7 Central. James Harden. And the Rockets take on the Mavs. And then Kyrie leads the Celtics against Blake Griffin and the Clippers at Staples Center. It's a good doubleheader. And our coverage tips with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app Wednesday night. <laughs> you know, think about it. Jamie Dix is the all-time winningest coach in the Big East. High percentage. The job opens here a couple different times. It was not the right time until they got to the Big 12. Has he made a difference? Based on that picture, he only, apparently owns one suit. <laughs> Timeout granted to West Virginia as they get the basketball back. So that the benefit of the doubt for West Virginia as Jimmy Dixon, I think he does only own one suit. But he's making a lot of money. It doesn't matter. <laughs> they got him back here. By the way, Trent Johnson did a terrific job of laying the foundation. Jamie Dixon has mentioned that. A lot of these guys were guys that Trent recruited. But Jamie coming back home where he won two titles as a play at any postseason tournament. So Women's basketball also ranked for the first time in seven years. So across the board, TCU's athletic programs have just gone to a different level yeah. over the last decade or so. And I, I got to tell you, I think Gary Patterson deserves a lot of credit because the TCU, they, they wouldn't be in the Big 12 without this football success that uh, he's created here. Alan fouls Brodzianski. She went over and caught up with Gary Patterson today. He'd be here tonight, except for he's on a recruiting trip, doing some due diligence. Think about this. They've won 40 games in the last four years. In fact, in his 17 years here at Texas, he is the most tenured coach now in the state of Texas of all of the Division I programs combined. He's been here the longest. 17 years is more than Texas, Texas A&M, SMU. So he's put some stability here on this Texas program. And uh, he would have been here tonight, but he's on a private plane recruiting a defensive tackle. Holly, how, how beautiful is that stadium? That's Gorgeous. What, they built that stadium in nine months, guys. They knocked it down at the end of one season by the start of the next season. It was done. You want to get something done in Texas big, Bob, this is the place to do it. Well, to be fair, <laughs> you can make an argument that TCU's football program is the best in the state. You right can. Now. Yeah, I mean, I, which program has had more success over the last five to seven years or so in this state than TCU? None. None. And guess what? Gary, Gary's not leaving. There's a statue outside of don't, him. Don't mess with Happy. Exactly. He is happy here. Robinson blocks on the coast-to-coast -coast effort. Teddy Allen the other way. He'll try and lay one in, and he's met by Brodzianski. Yeah, we've been talking about Kanate's prowess at the rim. But this guy, take a look. This is length right here, folks. And watch him wait. Remember, the good shot blockers never leave their feet first. Layup for Carter. Four blocks for Bronzianski. You got to give TCU credit. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. 
So Carter's pressure forces a turnover. 4.52 to go, but this would be some kind of a hole for West Virginia to dig themselves out of in under five minutes, down by 18. Carter leans in, blocking foul called, so he will go back to the free throw line to try and cut the lead down to 16. Well, this is a little more insurmountable, but I mentioned that Missouri game in Orlando. Carter and Miles combined for 55 points in that unbelievable comeback. Tonight they've combined for 10 to this not, point. Not enough. Carter and Miles are a combined 5 of 22 from the field and 0 for 9 from 3. And don't forget this guy who dropped uh, 19 on Texas Saturday out the whole second half with a reoccurrence of his growing strain, Beetle Bolden. How valuable is Kenrich Williams handling the ball? Robinson threw a double team. Robinson with a shot fake. Throws one to no man's land. Miller can't bail him out. And Carter's got the loose ball. I like Carter driving here and getting to the foul line. Instead, it's West for three. Brodziewski may have gotten a piece, and it falls through. It's down to 13 with four minutes to go. Got to come and trap at some point if you're West Virginia. Kenrich Williams is fouled on the drive. TCU holding on to a 13-point lead with 3.49 to go. They're looking for their first ever win against a ranked team here in this building. And it's the first time they've ever been on Big Monday. A lot of firsts, potentially, for TCU. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Joseph A. Bank. Tigers back at Torrey, what the pros are saying. Might be the difference in this Tiger comeback. Kenny May, John Anderson, here on ESPN and the ESPN app with SportsCenter as soon as we're done at TCU. Williams misses the free throw. Carter will drive it. Allen's the trailer. That's no good. Follows his miss. Lost it. Stripped away. Olden's got it. Double team in the corner. And he needs help. Picked pocket again by Carter. Miles for three. Offensive rebound. Kanate. And he's fouled. And that was started because of the quick hands of Javon Carter. And Bob, it was a late whistle, but uh, as a coach, I never had a problem with that. As long as the official got it right. Rather than be a tick late and get it right than to miss the ball. Let's take a look now. Watch Kanate get inside of Brodziansky. And right there, he's reached on the arm. Good piece of officiating. The official made sure there was contact. Williams got him. Oh, wow. Two free throws here opens the door a little bit. They actually called that foul on Brodzianski. Well, we saw it. It was Williams who got him on the arm. That's Brodzianski's second, and Kanate shaking off the pain. Kanate up to 13 points. He leads West Virginia.
TCU's 20-point lead has been cut down to 11 with 326 to go. And now a backcourt foul on Javon Carter. That's his fourth. So how does that affect how West Virginia can press in the last 324? It doesn't. You know, he's just got to play with four fouls and be smart. They're not going to take him out. He's a senior. He's got to know now to stay on the court. Hasn't found out this year. He knows how to play with four. But there's a recipe for a comeback. It always involves the team in front missing some free throws. Okay. And right now, TCU is missing just enough free throws to give West Virginia some hope. You know we call missed free throws? Invisible turnovers. They don't show up on the stock sheet. Just like a turnover. Back to a zone by TCU to try to stop some penetration. Away. Yes. Boy, that was a tough oh, shot. Man. Good defense by Olden. The lead down to 10. Good time for a turnover here. I'm surprised they're not running and jumping and trapping, Bob. Anytime there's two, two gold jerseys coming together, they ought to trap. Seven to shoot. Robinson gives it up, Brodzianski. In and out. Here comes Carter, trying to cut it to single digits. Carter for three. Short, and the rebound to Desmond Bain. Give TCU credit, Carter could not drive it. Had to shoot the tough shot. And now if you're TCU, unless you get a dunk here, Bain drove it and missed the layup attempt. And a foul called on Olden. So that gives West Virginia a chance to shoot free throws with the clock stopped at the other end. You're exactly right. That's why Bain, if he didn't have the dunk, didn't need to go too early in the shot clock. I'm telling you, Bob, if they make two and get it to eight, I would even think about subbing here if I were West Virginia to be able to set your press up off the main free throw. John Higgins over at the table to make sure that they have identified the shooter correctly. Baxter Miles shoots 71%. Javon Carter shoots 85%. So if you gave Bob Huggins the choice, he'd want Carter at the line. Let's take a look at what John Higgins was looking at. And obviously that's Baxter Miles that should be shooting free throws. So that should take 30 seconds, and it did. That's a senior guard for you, though. Javon Carter was really lobbying, like, hey, that should be the one shooting those free throws. I love that he gave that an effort, but no good. No, no good. It also could be a technical foul on him <laughs> if he got away with it. But a uh, good piece of officiating right there. First trip to the line tonight for Dexter Miles. Both teams in the double bonus the rest of the way. Now this made free throw again will allow West Virginia to set that press up. And I think they've got to be a little bit more aggressive in trapping. But Jamie Dixon on the right <laughs> is really hoping that Jamie Dixon on the left does the job in distracting Dexter Miles. And he did. Nine point game. Two minutes to go. Bain picks up his dribble. And a foul will be called, it looks like, away from the ball on Wesley Harris. 
He grabbed Robinson, who was trying to come help Desmond Bain out. One of those guys that transferred here from Texas A&M to play for Trent Johnson, then the coaching change, and a number of these kids have really blossomed under Jamie Dixon. Had a terrific staff. Two big free throws from Robinson. They're going to go back to zone again. Three block to the corner. Baxter Miles shot deflected by J.D. Miller. That's why you play zone, Bob. It's hard to shoot a three over a 6'9 guy. That's what Miles tried to do. Good coaching change. TCU has never beaten a ranked team here at the Showmeyer Arena. They have also never beaten West Virginia. Both of those trains are going down tonight. Rob Zionski with a chance for a three-point play. Well, we saw in the last 48 hours quiet desperation from a team that had been close. But this league gives you no favors. You have to earn everything. And we've seen TCU tonight, Bob, come out with some renewed vigor. And that'll be another assist for Alex Robinson. That won't go. Baxter Miles. The putback rolls home. 106 remaining. Miller is fouled. And a chance to congratulate Alex Robinson as tonight's player of the game brought to you by Phillip 66. He stuffed the box score in just about every conceivable category. Yeah, he really did. Remember, he'd be sharing the backcourt with Jalen Fisher. Both of those guys are point guards. And it was a really good combination when Fisher went out with the knee injury. All the weight of the world was on this guy to run this team. And what a terrific job I thought he did tonight. It'll all be on Alex Robinson's shoulders with Jalen Fisher out for the rest of the year. And he looks like he's ready to carry the load. Yep, we, went, we watched it last year at the NIT, didn't we? Where he had to handle the ball. Miles from the corner, hits a three. So the lead back to 10 with 50 seconds to go. Robinson fouled by Miles. Now this is why J.D. Dixon came back to his alma mater. Highly successful at Pittsburgh. The alma mater called him home and he picked the perfect time. The facilities, the talent in the Dallas area, the excitement on campus, Bob. One the point guard. How about that? Two Southwest Conference titles for Jim Killingsworth. Spins, throws a wild one up, and draws a foul on Kenrich Williams. Thirty-nine seconds to go as Javon Carter goes to the line, and the road does not get easier for West Virginia. 
Saturday night, prime time in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. Kentucky is going to come to Morgantown. Payback time. And they're in need of a win, too. They dropped out of the poll for the first time since 2014 today. Yeah, but let me tell you who's looking forward to that game on Saturday night. Daxter Miles. They met in the Sweet 16 when he was a freshman. Kentucky was 36-0. He promised they'd be 36-1. Kentucky won 78-39. And Javon Carter and Daxter Miles are going to get a chance at payback Saturday night in Morgantown, already sold out. Of course, John Calipari, Bob Huggins have been friends almost 40 years. Grew up in the same neck of the woods, Western PA, Eastern Ohio. They kid each other a lot, bust each other's chops, but uh, fast friends, great competitors. a fish fry together. John Calipari has pitched in, signed about 200 basketballs for Coach Huggins that they're going to auction off at the Bob Huggins Fish Fry on Friday night to raise money for his mom's fund against cancer. So Calipari really stepping up big to be there for Bob Huggins as they try to combat cancer. You see a lot of the coaches tonight wearing the sneakers, coaches versus cancer all week this week. So both guys really stepping up big time to make that happen this weekend. And by the way, Holly, David Patrick on that sideline right next to Jamie Dixon. His father-in-law, Roy Frank, is at MD Anderson battling uh, that dreaded disease in Houston. He's watching the game tonight. I'm sure he's got a purple T-shirt on. Roy Frank, we're thinking about you, and we're thinking about all you out there fighting that insidious disease. And kudos to all these coaches and also the V Foundation, which we support at ESPN. Another foul call before TCU can inbound the ball. Looks like that might be on Baxter Miles. So more free throws for TCU with just under 30 seconds to go. Well, for TCU, we talk about the fact that Morgantown is sold out on Saturday night for the game against Kentucky. This place has been sold out, particularly for this game, the moment that this one was announced when the TCU basketball schedule came out and they knew that Big Monday was coming here for the first time in the history of Schomeyer Arena. They knew this was going to be an event game and the fact that they're going to win against a ranked team for the first time in the history of this building and the fact that this is the first time they will beat West Virginia and all of these close losses that they've had they desperately needed a bounce back win. This is a season saver in many ways, potentially for TCU. Uh, yeah, and unless you're in this league night in, night out, you know, you look at two and five, you go, well, they can't be any good. They're overrated. But this team was 12 and 0 in non conference play, and they've lost some excruciating games. And you, I think you said it early, Bob. You got to put up or shut up, basically. You know, you, you, you can't keep complaining about losing close games. They needed this game, and this was a statement tonight. Now the student section is forming as if when this thing goes to all zeros they're going to be celebrating on the court. Well I know it's the seventh ranked team in the country but that's the thing the beauty of the Big 12. There's no difference between these two teams. I wouldn't storm the court for this win. Well, has got the rebounds and one more foul delays whatever the post game celebration is going to be for TCU. You know, Texas Tech was ranked eight the other night, and they went into the uh, Hilton Coliseum, and that really wasn't a big upset. Any team in this league can beat any other team in this league, home or away. are going to score on the court, Bob. I'm going underneath this table here. So I'll see you later. As long as the Speedo guys stay <laughs> away from you. Yeah, keep their distance all as well. Tip followed by Miles with four seconds to go. And I don't blame the fans for booing. And I'm wondering why John Higgins felt the need to blow the whistle one more time. Well, foul's a foul. Wow. A 
foul is a foul, no matter where it is or when it is, Bob. And you, you know what I love about this league? In mid-February, unlike a lot of leagues that play those unbalanced schedules, this this team this team goes to uh, Morgantown TCU. Oh, they leave them? I think the student section was turned away by one set of security guards. They might be trying to find a different route. We just need Gary Patterson's offensive line out here. And it looks like the game that refused to end might finally end. And finally, the fans here in Fort Worth can celebrate their first ever win against West Virginia and their first win in this building against a ranked team. 82-73 is the final. TCU over West Virginia. For Fran Fraschilla and Holly Rowe, I'm Bob Wischusen. Big win for the Frogs. It's time to get Sports Center underway. Guys, take it away.